Good morning. Welcome back to another day of GC365. Today is June 22nd. We are day 173 of our reading. So if you have been consistent, wow, great job. Um, I've gotten behind a few times, I I have to (laughs) confess. Um, But I'm caught up right now, so that's a good thing. And I am Pastor Stacy. I'm the family pastor here. I'm Griffin. Griffin is a great family friend of ours. Um, we are very close friends with his whole family and all of his parent, all his parents <laughs> and his sister, they all know that Griffin is my favorite Godinus. Mm-hmm. It's not a secret at all. I love them all, but it's okay yeah. to have favorites. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to just dive right in. We've got second Kings three that we are first starting out with. Um, that's, we see the Ahab son, Joram takes over. And as we were talking earlier, I thought it was interesting. It says that he still did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as bad as his parents. Yeah. His they parents were, were worse. <laughs> yeah, his parents were worse. <laughs> and it says, at least he took down the pillars and some um, false altars that they were yeah. worshiping and such. But he still doesn't sound like he was a great person. No, not at all. Um, it g- went on to say that, so he was rallying the troops with Edom and another city as well. I kind of forget the I name. Forget too. Yes. But there's like three cities and they're going to go attack Moab. And, but then there's a drought and there's no water. And so they go to Elisha, the prophet who they knew was a follower of God asking for his help. And I just thought that is so interesting. That's what, I mean, I've been so guilty of that. Yeah, me too. When I only pray. I only go to God when I know I need his help, when I know I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. When things are going great, it's kind of, I kind of feel like, oh, I got this. Yeah. Life's good. Yeah. You know? You're doing it your own way. Totally. Yeah. Um, we were talking about, it was interesting. So when they went to Elisha, um, he said, okay, fine. I will talk to God um, about this for you. But he asked for his heart. Yeah. And we were saying that that's kind of, I thought it was a great example of why we even start services on Sunday morning with worship, that it is such a great way to invite the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then it was after the music was playing that then he was able to talk to God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, (laughs) the mobilized in second Kings three 21. So when the city of Moab heard that they were coming, he says that he, the king mobilized every man who was old enough to wear a sword. <laughs> How old do you think it was? They didn't I don't, say. No, they didn't. I'd say probably like eight, nine. Like I, I, like I think so too. Young. Yeah. Like think that is third grade, third grade. second, third yeah. grade. It could go all the way up to like a hundred year olds. <laughs> like, True. And you yeah, help in the kids zone. I do. So think of some of those kind of rowdy boys <laughs> yeah. that are in the, would they, would you trust them with Not a sword? Of- <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, I guess there's power in numbers yeah. as well. Um, Second Kings four, one through 17. You got a bit out of this passage. Why don't you go ahead and share? Um, so like the oil that he used, he used it to change the woman's life. So it kind of showed that God can take anything small and make it life changing. Yeah for people. And so I felt like sometimes we feel like the oil we are like worthless or insignificant Mm. is what we feel Mm -hmm. like. And God in the Bible didn't choose those people. He would choose the uh, fishermen or the, or he chose those people. He didn't choose the Kings or the priests. He chose the fishermen, the shepherds. So it's kind of like what's stopping God from using us as opposed to someone greater, like pastor Dan or something like that. That's so true. So true. We feel that, well, I can't make a difference, but so-and-so they sure are great. I'm glad that they're doing Mm -hmm. it and not feeling like we have the gifts and abilities to uh, represent God. That's really good. Um, It went on to say there was a woman in Shunem, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, But when Elisha would travel to that city, she would take care of him. She would provide food. She even talked her husband into building a room that he could stay at. And he kept saying, well, what can I do for you? And she was like, nothing. My family takes great care of me. Uh, I, I just want to be able to do this for you. And I thought that's such a great example of just being a good Christian, being a great follower of God and being kind to one another, yeah. 
just out of the kindness of yeah, their heart. Like she welcoming did, everyone. Yes, she did not expect anything back. Going into our New Testament reading, we're in Acts 14, and we see Paul and Barnabas. Yes. And they're doing great things. Yeah. They heal the paralyzed man, uh, but then quickly everybody turns on them. Yeah. It's like they're just doing God's work, and then all of a sudden they're yes. the evil ones. Yes. And we, and again, like we were just saying though, we forget, we forget the great things that God does for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we might be convicted one Sunday going, oh, that's right. I shouldn't judge one another, or I do need to represent Jesus better. But then somebody makes us mad and we're back to gossiping mm -hmm. or, um, judging them. Yeah, wanting to get revenge. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which <laughs> we see a bit of that <laughs> in our do. Psalms. Yeah. <laughs> That was interesting. Um, yeah. So they're, they're thinking that Paul and Barnabas are so great, but almost not almost, but to the point where they don't just see them as um, followers of Jesus, but they actually are saying, I think that they're the great God Zeus and yeah. others. And so now their focus is completely off yep. and wrong. And then they end up stoning Paul. They take him out of the city. They think he's dead. And he, he's, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> there are I wonder why yeah the Bible is interesting. It is. Um well and this is I don't remember what they're so distraught and we were laughing yeah. earlier how um so Paul and Barnabas both they were so upset and they tore their clothing. <laughs> they just tear their clothes. <laughs> yes. And I was saying that we hear of that a bit in the Old Testament, that that was kind of a common thing. Like King David, he would tear his cloak in distress. And saying, okay, what would that look like yeah. if, if that was a we thing? Did it. Like we were just in the grocery store, got mad and just ripped off our clothes. Yes, yes. <laughs> and people would be going, oh, he must be in a yeah, distressful time in his life. Today. In this last year, there would have been a, a lot, lot of people <laughs> tearing yeah. their clothes. And we all would have understood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get yeah. it. 2020. 2020. <laughs> yeah. Lots of clothes. Clothing was torn. Um. In verse 21, I, I, again, they just, they returned to um, Antioch and Syria and they just help the, encourage the leaders to stay strong in their faith. And, uh, you know, you lead in different areas here mm -hmm. around the church. Um, I lead different groups and you do, it is easy to get discouraged Yeah, and to think, what, is this even worth it? Mm -hmm. Or like when you're in the kid zone, I imagine you probably get frustrated with some of those Sometimes, kids yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and summer camps you've led a, for many years mm -hmm. and planning yeah. on doing it again. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what brings you back when you are discouraged? What helps you to kind of keep going? I think just looking at like the bright side of it, mm -hmm. like just thinking this is a fun thing just because one kid made me a little angry or yeah. a little like disappointed. What, why should I stop? Yeah. Like it just, it's a fun thing for me to do. It, I love it. Mm -hmm. So why, just because one kid ruined something. Why? Well, and you probably have a handful of, of kids that make it worth it. Yes. A lot of them. That yeah. you go home and go, oh my gosh, but they're so great. And it was so funny when they said this. Yeah, can't wait to see them tomorrow. Yeah. Or next week. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. And it's fun too. When you see a change in the attitude yes. of someone that was making some poor choices mm -hmm. And you think, oh, maybe I actually made a difference. Yeah, that also them. makes it a lot yes, more worth it. Totally. Um, Psalms 140. This one was written by David. And uh, I just had put that it was it was a prayer for protection against his enemies. And this is where we see, I mean, he's praying for vengeance yeah. on these people. Yeah. Like what was one of the things I think that... it was like dropping hot coals on their yes. head or something like that. <laughs> 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 yes. And um, there have been times in my life when uh, I was just in a really hard place and I'd been very hurt. And, I, you know, I wanted to retaliate. Yeah. I wanted to hurt. And it really did give me comfort knowing, okay, God knows all of the details. Mm -hmm. And I have, I, I like to think I have a healthy fear of God that I would not want God's wrath on yeah. me. And so I, he does take care of us. He does. In that sense yeah. of taking care of our enemies. Proverbs 17, 22. 17, yeah, 22. A cheerful heart is, a, is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. That was such a good one. It was. Yeah, it was really good. As my dad was reading this, he was saying, oh, that kind of sounds like laughter is the best medicine. Yeah. 
So he was looking up like some of the reasons laughter makes us happy. And there are so many things with like the chemicals in our bodies and the muscles in our bodies. And it's crazy how like God knew that yes. before stuff like biology existed. And just it's crazy. Like he knows every and, and he out created of us. laughter. Yeah. To make like what if we were like sneezed and make, like what instead of laughing? Yeah. Like we were just walking around <laughs> sneezing everywhere. <laughs> Like, I, I laugh a lot and I have kind of a loud, sometimes obnoxious <laughs> laugh. So I'm glad that sneezing isn't yeah. the option because yeah, that would be kind mm -hmm. of gross and even more <laughs> yeah. obnoxious. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, it was a pretty good day overall. Yeah. I think I'm looking forward to um, some of the getting yeah further into it. Mm -hmm. And so stay with it. Uh, if you are behind, don't feel like you have to catch up. Just pick up where we are and continue to follow along.